Hey folks, Chuck Stacks here. A few weeks ago, my life was blissfully normal. The North Carolina city I lived in was teeming with life. I didn't have any concerns or worries. But that seemed like an eternity ago. Hard to believe it's only been three weeks. God knows what state the rest of the world is in. They blocked off Chapel Hill a few days after all hell broke loose. They shut off the city's power, water, and communication. As if shutting us down and pretending Chapel Hill never existed could stop this problem from going global. Damn government. I remember when the city officials installed the warning sirens. They said it was precautionary, but I wonder how many people believed it. I wonder if the infection had already begun and the sirens were just confirming the city's demise. So I was working near the airport when the sirens went off. It started as a low howl, but within minutes it had grown to a bone-chilling wail. We all knew what it meant. Get out of the city, now. So I grabbed my stuff and joined a crowd of panicking people heading to the parking lot. My plan was simple. Get my car, get my wife, drive as fast as I could to Tennessee. Get my sister and her husband and their little girls, and we'll all head as far west as possible. But I didn't make it past step one. I got to my car only to find all four tires slashed. You know, standing there in the parking lot cussing, I was in the middle of pure chaos. Blood spilled on the sidewalks. Screams of terror were heard before bodies dropped in the street. I mean, I could only stare in horror at the savagery. It was utter mayhem. So I did the smartest thing I could think of. Ran. Fast. But my train of thought was broken when a teenage girl with blonde hair wearing a ripped and bloody dress spotted me, staring right at me. But her right eye, her right eye had been ripped out of her face, and she was bleeding all over. And she let out a loud shriek and came running at me. My brain gave me a jolt of energy, and I took off running too. I could hear her footsteps close behind me, then another pair of running feet, and another. Soon I had a crowd of them chasing me, shrieking, groaning, and screeching at me. I mean, there could have been only a few of them, or a dozen, I don't know. I didn't dare stop or slow down to look behind me. I saw a small group of uninfected people quickly ushering in more uninfected people while fighting off the infected. So I ran up to the storage building, ran up the loading dock steps, and I, st I stood there, leaned over, catch my breath and the guy said they see us get the hell inside so we stumbled and tripped over each other just trying to get through the door once we were all in the building the guy shut the door and quickly nailed some thick two by ten boards over the door then a policewoman walked over with a rifle pointed at me and she said are you bit i shook my head no she held out a pistol handing it to me and said you know how to use one of these i nodded my head yes so there it was we stayed huddled together in that dark building for weeks. As each day passed, the screams outside grew quieter and fewer. There was occasional beating on the door, someone begging for help, but their pleading words soon turned into screams and then silence. It's day 20 as I'm recording this. They've been clawing at the door for days. The cheap wood barrier won't hold much longer. I've given up all hope of being rescued. There's no signal on my phone, so I have no idea what day or what time it is. I can tell by the slits of light coming in from the boarded up door that it's sun sunrise. North Carolina sunrises were always so beautiful. Too bad I'll never get to see them again. The way the door is splintering from the constant abuse, I can pretty much guarantee they'll have broken it down by nightfall. A few minutes after that, we'll all be dead. I'm recording this for the military. If you're watching this, you're too late. <laughs>